Hey everybody, it's Stephen Baxley here with Airworks and Man Solutions. So I'm coming to you today, I wanted to give you a quick, uh, what I hope to be quick, review of the Autel Evo 2 Dual with the iRay 640T thermal radiometric camera. So we've got them here compared to, um, we got the, this is the, the Autel Evo 2 Dual aircraft obviously with the 640T. So this is the iRay 640T thermal radiometric camera on this one. This is the uh, Autel Evo 2 Dual, the American made with foreign labor and components or, or however that is from Alltail. Um, that's what this aircraft is and it has the FLIR Basan 640 thermal uh, dual camera on it. So as you can see just from pretty much from the naked eye even not up close they look pretty much the same not a whole lot of difference. What you'll notice is there is a, a clear difference in the lens or maybe the the finish on the lens of the thermal. It's a little bit different and also the bezel around that thermal sensor um, camera is a little bit different on, on between the two. Um, but anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. We're interested in what my feedback is, I guess, on how it works. It's good. I mean, I have no nothing else to say. At, at first, I was very skeptical. Um, even without knowledge, I said, hey, we got to remember, this is not going to be a FLIR. This is not a FLIR brand product. We all know FLIR. FLIR is great. That's kind of what we've known for years. Um, and when we start bringing in something that's non-FLIR, uh, a lot of people just assume FLIR is, um, is they, they've replaced thermal with FLIR because of that brand and what we know about it. But the reality is this FLIR is a brand. iRay is a brand. Um, so this is an iRay core. It's really good. From a public safety standpoint, I'm a public safety guy. We focus on public safety here at Airworks on Men Solutions. All of our guys are public safety. It's really good. I don't know how else to say it. I, we've compared it um, side by side um, in two different, we had uh, co coinciding flights with both of these systems. Last week when they first came in, we flown some at night. The imagery, the contrast, the quality of the image and the detail in it, to me, is might be a little better than the FLIR. I, I mean, it's just, uh, again, it's, it's what I see and it's my opinion. Um, and that is what it is. Take that for what it's worth. But um, it works really well. Where there's nothing out there. Aircrafts, th there's nothing's different between any of that. All, only thing that's going to be different is what that data output from the from the thermal image looks like. And uh, so I've got it pulled up here. And um, what we're going to do is overlay this so you can kind of see. But when what you'll see in the, in the Autel Explorer app when you're in thermal, 100% thermal mode. So you've got three modes. you got visible, you got thermal, and you got a picture in picture. So when you're in full thermal mode, you can be in record. So in record mode, full thermal mode, we have a frame comes up. It looks exactly like what you would find in DJI Pilot in the, the Mavic 2 Dual or um, one of the X-T2s, what you would find in, in that. So you got the frame with the hottest and coldest. And you got those two dots. It's going to tell you those two things. Point some out. Keep some in the frame. You can move that frame around. You can maximize it, minimize it, do whatever you want to do. You can also go to a spot meter. Um, select that and point anywhere on the screen. Tap anywhere on the screen, any object. And it's going to give you a thermal radiometric reading, uh, temperature reading lamp. What you'll notice is Celsius. There is no way, unless I've totally missed it, there's no way, no way, nowhere inside the, the software right now or inside this app that you can change that. I assume that's going to be a simple setting somewhere. Maybe it's overlooked. Um, we'll get that request in the all tell and ask them. But um, anyway, so you've got, it's the same basic settings there. You also notice when we go into the camera, when you're in thermal mode and you go into the camera settings, you have several options that relate specifically to thermal. So one of the first ones that comes in is brightness and contrast. So there's a couple of readings. There's an auto one, an auto two, and then there's a manual. So you can go into manual mode and you can turn your brightness and your contrast up and down to kind of to, to better, I suppose, define what you're looking for um, when you're out in the field. So this is great. We've got some control of that. We also have a detail enhancement option. You can turn on and off and it has a setting of one to eight. Um, I've played with it back and forth. It makes a difference. You can go up and down and clarify kind of fine edges a little bit more. I would not go anywhere near saying this is like MSX, so don't let it get you in that in that mind of detail enhancement as MSX. It's two totally different things. But I think it's to satisfy a little bit of that to be able to define objects a little better, and it does work. There's a noise reduction option you can turn on and off. There's a gain mode. 
um, which works really well. You got a high and low gain, and then an auto. Um, and uh, when you go through and you change that, it makes a difference. Um, and what kind of what you're seeing? You have a thermal imaging emissivity option of was uh, 10 to 100 percent, so you can adjust that up and down. It makes a difference when you do that. Um, you have a temperature warning. You can turn that on, and you can set your temperature ranges. So if any objects are defined. For example, within your image, either within your, your spot meter or within your frame, it will warn you. It will give you an audible alert. You have isotherm settings. There's a user-defined option. There's off. There's search for human, already pre-programmed. You also have a search fire temp, so very high temperatures. And you also have a user-defined, and you can, you can isolate those thermal settings a little bit. Or you can simply turn it off. But they, um, again, this... The thermal camera works really well. I've been satisfied with it. If I were using it from a public safety standpoint out um, on a call looking for a fleeing suspect, if I were looking for a missing child or a missing person, missing animal, anything, this works well. It is, it, there, there's, I mean, it, it, it compares, if not um, exactly to me, possibly a little better than the FLIR uh, Basan 640. And I mean, again, that's an opinion. Um, I, um, I'm not looking at imagery from a standpoint. I'm not looking at it in, in, uh, in any tool to pull out any more data other than just viewing um, that raw data in the field looking for suspects or looking for missing persons. That's where I'm coming from on this. So make sure everybody understands that. That's what I do. That's what we typically sell to the people that do that. Um, we don't typically sell to um, inspection companies and things like that, although we have sold to many. Um, they are professionals, and they know what they're looking for and know what they want, and they come to us and we can help them with that. However, again, from a standpoint of public safety, this is really good. We put out some video last week, some side-by-side -side imagery to show you those details in the two images from white hot um, from about 200 feet um, above ground and then about 200 feet out. 71 degrees, high noon, side by side, almost the exact same positioning. And you can really see, and you can see me standing out and I'm doing a uh, kind of a jumping jack move out behind my truck on some, some asphalt out back. And I mean, quite frankly, that the image from the 640T was more clear, more defined than you would found, than you found in the, in the FLIR. That's my feedback. Uh, the FLIR did have some other nuances that I didn't see, which you could see, for example, cross members, and we got a big fifth wheel camper out back, and the cross members that had heated up under the roof, that's a, that's a fiberglass type roof on that particular um, fifth wheel camper trailer. And those cross members, which are metal up underneath there, are in aluminum, could clearly see that they had um, had some thermal loading in those, and they were they were hotter, so you could see those on the FLIR, I could not see them as well on the um, 640T imagery. However, I could see me better in the 640T than I could see myself on the FLIR Basan. So, again, it's all in what you're going to use it for. But, again, we're coming to you from a standpoint of public safety. It's nice. It's less expensive. Um, we've got both of them. I've still got both in stock. Um, Unless you know somebody's specifically working, looking for um, the USA made, and you really truly want a FLIR, um, I think that you're going to be happy with the 640T just the same. So we've got both. We'd love to sell you both. We just want to be honest with you and give you our opinions because everybody always likes an opinion of of what we have to say, and I think it speaks volumes when I can when again I can tell you that I'm not going to um, tell you that. This one's better because it costs more, um, and I've still got them in stock. I'm going to tell you which one I think is the best option for you to buy and use to be successful with. So, again, we hope to uh, see you soon. If you got any questions about this unit, if you want to buy one, of course, we'd love to sell you one. We've got them in stock. Uh, give us a call. Shoot us a text. Find us online, Facebook, Instagram, anywhere. It's airworksdrone.com. Our phone number is 864-898-9444. We're at Airworks Drone almost on any type of platform you look for from social media, and uh, we respond almost 24-7. So reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Talk to you soon.